we we'll close our eyes as we pray together father in the name of jesus thank you lord because we're here because you invited us and we know that it's a special invitation you have given us it will not be in vain in jesus name I pray, Lord, that everywhere this world will go. Those of us who are here, those of us who are in various parts of this nation, and various parts of this continent, Africa, and beyond Africa, we pray that you send forth the word. You send your power with the word in Jesus' name. Let the authority of the name of Jesus go with this word, so that everywhere this world reaches power will reach there anointing that breaks the yoke will reach there miracles of every shape and every value and every size and in all the varieties will reach everywhere in jesus name from this very night make it a night we'll never forget an experience that will be unforgettable for the rest of our lives. Be with us, Lord, and anoint the word that comes out. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. It's wonderful to be together. And every time is a time of forgetting the things of the past and concentrating on the Lord, consecrating the whole time to be with the Lord so that everything he needs to do in our spirit, in our soul, in our hearts, in our body, in our Christian life in general, and in the Christian ministry has committed into our hands, will give him a chance to do that. And tonight, this message a night to be remembered i come to exodus chapter 12. exodus chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 1 and the lord spake unto moses and unto aaron in the land of egypt saying this month shall be unto you the beginning of months it shall be the first month of the year for you the Lord was going to start a new thing with the children of Israel as a whole nation. That also translates to me. He was going to do a new thing in every life among the children of Israel. Every individual, every man, every woman, every child, and the whole nation as a whole. And this is recorded for you and for me that the Lord is about to do something new something special something unforgettable something that has not been done before and i pray that every one of us will so open our hearts open our lives and allow him to do this new thing in jesus name and so god said it will be the beginning of life for them the beginning of years for them the beginning of a new area of existence for them so it goes on in verse 3 because he was going to give them instructions they were to follow he was going to give them the steps they will take the things they will do that will bring this new experience into their lives and into the nation verse 3 speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel saying in the tenth day of this month they shall take up they shall take to them every man a lamb I want you to underline that to your Bible a lamb according to the house of their fathers a lamb for an house underline that a lamb a lamb for an house in verse 4 and if the household be, be, too, be too little for the lamb underline that in verse 4 is the lamb it says let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls every man according to his eating shall make your couch 
for the lamb. In verse 5, your lamb shall be, shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. In verse 6, and ye shall keep it up unto the fourteenth day of the, of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. As we look at what the Lord was telling them, he was telling them that this night to be remembered was going to be, number one, a night of redemption. They have been in captivity for so many years and the captivity of so many years was going to stop that very night. Your captivity of many years will stop tonight. Not only a night of redemption, it was going to be a night of release. The Lord was going to release them out of the house of bondage. This night will be our night of release. Anything binding us, anything holding us down, anything physical, anything spiritual, anything emotional, anything economic, holding us down, chaining us down, tonight will be our night of release. For the children of Israel, they were living in the midst of the children of the Egyptians. And even though the Israelites were going to have a night of redemption, a night of release, for the children, for the Egyptians, it was going to be a night of retribution. A night of recompense when all the evil they have done will be visited upon them. The enemies of the people of God will have this night a night of retribution. Number four, it was going to be a night of revelation. They will experience things they had never experienced. And for you, for me, for us tonight, you are going to have a night of revelation. You see these children of Israel, they had been in captivity for such a long time. And because of that captivity and the rigor and the oppression against their lives, they were sick, they were weak. Many of them were like invalids. But the word says that at this very time, he brought them out. And there was not one feeble among them. They discovered it was a night of recovery. Isn't it tonight your night of recovery? I said it's not tonight the night of your recovery. It will be in Jesus' name. A night of renewal, a night of revival. That's why the Lord told them that this is what you will do. Because everything now depended on the Lamb. The lamb. I told you to mark your Bible in verse 3. It was a lamb. That was general. A lamb. Take a lamb. Household, take a lamb. Head of the family, take a lamb. By the time you come to verse 4, it's not just a lamb now, it is the lamb. It becomes very specific, it becomes very definite. The lamb. By the time you come to verse 5, it's now your lamb. Which means now you're having a personal faith, a personal trust, a personal confidence from a lamb to the lamb. Now to your lamb. And this lamb that has become your lamb will now be killed and the blood will be applied. Then we move to verse 12. For the Lord shall pass through the, through the land of Egypt this night. That's the night we're talking about. And will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt. 
both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. The Lord revealed himself to these children of Israel, and he said, This is me, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God that made a covenant with the patriarchs and their forefathers. And the fulfillment of the time of the covenant, that time had now arrived. That's why I said, It will be this night the Lord himself will pass through the land. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token, for a sign, for a symbol. That's what I'll be looking for. The blood of the Lamb will be for you a token. It will be a sign upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. That's what began the deliverance of the children of Israel. What began the redemption of the children of Israel. What began the release of the children of Israel out of the land of captivity where they had been for many years. And this has been written for you and for me so that we can learn our lesson from this. Because which you will have a lamb, which you will have the lamb, and which you will have our lamb that has not become personal, that will trust, that will believe, that we know this is what he has done for us. I've read to you in Exodus chapter 12, the lamb for the nation. Now we come to John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, verse 29, the next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Exodus, the Lamb for the nation. John, the Lamb for the world, that the same sin, indeed more than what the Lamb in the Old Testament did for the children of Israel, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, will do for you, will do for me, will do for us all together in Jesus' name. A night to be remembered, three things to consider. Number one, the need for redemption. The need for redemption. The children of Israel had a need. For them, the need was obvious because they were in captivity. And for us, the need ought to be obvious. By the time you go through the scriptures, you will see the need for our redemption. Number two, the nature of our redemption. The nature of the redemption of the children of Israel is very clear from the story that we read about them. And the nature of our own redemption is also very clear, manifest, as we read from the scriptures. And you ought to examine yourself and examine your situation, your spiritual life, your moral life, your physical, natural life. And your professional life, your family life, everything about you. And find out, is there any area where I definitely need redemption, total redemption, the nature of our redemption. Number three, the nearness of the final redemption. There is still another area of redemption that we're waiting for. And how near that is. Our redemption is near. We're looking at number one, the need for redemption. We're coming back to Exodus. 
In Exodus chapter 3, here God was talking to Moses. He was going to send Moses to the people of Israel in Egypt so that he will be used of God as an instrument to bring redemption unto them. And so he tells us in what he told Moses, we see the need for their redemption. And in this too, we see the need for our own redemption. Exodus chapter 3, I'm reading verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them. That word deliver you could put to save them. That word deliver you could put to redeem them. That word you could put to rescue them. Let me read with all those words which are like synonyms to the, that word deliver. For and I am come down to deliver them, to rescue them, to redeem them, to set them free, and to release them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, and a large and unto a lamp flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the, of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. As you look at those verses, Many things stand out very clearly. The reason for their deliverance stands out very clearly. And then deliverance stands out very clearly. The need for redemption and the need for deliverance and the need for bringing them out. It says in verse 7, they were in affliction. I've surely seen the affliction of my people. It says in that verse 7, verse 7 it says, I've heard their cry because of the affliction so painful, because of the affliction so oppressive, because of the affliction so terrible. That's why they cried. And that shows the need for the deliverance, the need for the redemption. It also talks about their task masters. As you look at your life, anything that oppresses, anything that causes sorrow, anything that causes suffering, anything that drives you back from your goal, anything that makes you not to realize what the Lord has called you for or what the Lord wants to accomplish in your life, your spiritual life. Do you see any limitation, any hindrance, any oppression, any sorrow, anything that makes you unhappy, very painful? As you look at your health, are you seeing something like an oppression, like tax masters, overlaboring you, oppressing you, tormenting your life? And that causes sorrow. In fact, at the end of a sermon, it mentions sorrows in the plural. That was what made it necessary, the necessity of redemption. As I come to verse 8, the Lord says, Now I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. I want you to picture your mind, the Egyptians holding them down. Like maybe the Lucifer might be holding somebody down over there. The adversary, the enemy of progress, holding somebody down over there. That you feel like unfulfilled. You feel like a failure. You feel like you are defeated. And life has served you with something that oppresses you. And you are saying, who shall deliver me out of 
this body of death out of this bondage it goes on to say that the lord has come to deliver them and is going to bring them to a land that is good a land of plenty a land of joy a land flowing with milk and honey a, la a land that is fruitful it says now therefore in verse 9 behold the cry again it talks about their cry and their weeping but then it also explains what the redemption is from verse 7 it says the lord said i've seen their sorrow i'm going to end the sorrow i've seen the affliction i'm going to put an end to the affliction i've seen all the predicaments i'm going to put an end to all those predicaments then it says i've come to deliver them the deliverance is the redemption the release is that redemption and a setting free is that redemption i'm bringing them out the bringing out is that redemption i'm going to bring them to a land that is free with milk and honey i'm going to bring them to that good land that i promised abraham isaac and jacob and this is the time that i get them out and then i bring them in into the fulfillment of the promise into the performance of the promise that the lord had given that shows uh, the need or the necessity or the reason why they had that redemption and as you look at your life you're looking at anything missing there any victory missing there joy and fullness of life missing there the fulfillment of the promise of god they shall have life and life more abundantly missing there eternal life spiritual life the salvation of the lord the victory that comes with salvation missing there tonight will experience a redemption you'll experience a release will experience a revelation a restoration restoration of every spiritual thing you have lost in jesus name a recovery a recovery from that sickness recovery from that weakness recovery from that infirmity in your life total redemption spiritual natural and physical and emotional in every area coming your way tonight in jesus name in deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 15 deuteronomy chapter 15 I'm reading from verse 15 and thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt a bondman in the land of Egypt nobody likes to be a slave but these people they were slaves to the Egyptians and God said does the reason I'm redeeming you are you enslaved to anything enslaved to a bad habit enslaved to a besetting sin enslaved to an evil spirit enslaved to satan himself enslaved to something that is more powerful than you are enslaved to something you want to get out you cannot get out I bring good news from Calvary to you. Good news from the Lamb of God unto you. That slavery is sending tonight in Jesus' name. And thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in the land of Egypt. And the Lord thy God redeemed thee, delivered thee, brought you out, set you free. Therefore, I command thee this sin this day. Jeremiah chapter 31. We're looking at verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 31. We're looking at verse 11. It says, For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. The Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. And that, that is the reason the Lord sent the Redeemer unto them and showed them the way of redemption. Because they couldn't deliver themselves, they couldn't redeem themselves. Their enemy was stronger than them. 
And because the enemy, the adversary, the bondman, was the bondsman, was stronger than them, that's why they couldn't deliver themselves. And the Lord said, Now, God Himself, the Almighty Himself, through the Lamb, through the shedding of the blood of the Lamb, He has come to deliver them and redeem them from the hand of Him that was stronger than them. You might have found out that the things you battle against, they are stronger than you are. Your sins stronger than you could deliver yourself from. Your evil habits stronger than you could deliver yourself from. It might be the sin that comes over and over and over. And you sense it that although you come to church, if you continue life like this, eternal hell, eternal condemnation, eternal suffering will be the end. And you struggle and you cannot deliver yourself. Good news for you tonight. The Lord will deliver you from that thing that is stronger than who you are. The power of sin will be broken in your life in Jesus' name. Sometimes, the sin that is stronger than you are may not be a sin. It may be a kind of sickness. That you always fall into that sickness. Always fall into that sickness. You have tried this approach, that remedy. You have tried everything you could try. And yet that sickness is still there. And it now terrifies you, makes you afraid. It's like this thing might take your life. Good news for you tonight. You will not die. That sickness that is stronger than you. Stronger than all the remedy you have tried to find until today. God will redeem you from that thing that is stronger than you are in Jesus name. Sometimes it's not a sin, sometimes it's not a, it's not a sickness, sometimes it's a spirit. And this evil spirit, evil power, evil personality tries to squeeze life out of you. That you feel, how can I be saved from this, redeemed from this, rescued from this, delivered from this. Tonight is a night to remember. That spirit will be conquered and cast out of your life even tonight in Jesus' name. Point number two, the nature of our redemption. This redemption we're talking about, what does it mean? What does it look like? How does it feel to have this redemption exodus again chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 12 exodus chapter 12 exodus chapter 12 we're reading from verse 12 for i will pass through the land of egypt this night i will smite all i will smite all i will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a sign, for a token, for a symbol. Upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. We're thinking about now the nature of this redemption. For the children of Israel, what did that redemption look like? What did that redemption mean unto them? This is what it meant for them, for the children of Israel. Judgment universal judgment was coming upon everyone the redemption meant that the judgment that came universally on everybody will pass them over the bible says 
the soul that sin it, it shall die. The wages of sin is death. And so judgment, condemnation comes upon every man. Our redemption means that as the judgment of God is universal, worldwide, touching everybody, coming upon everybody, the people who repent, who turn away from their sin, and they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and they apply the blood of the Lamb, Upon their hearts by faith, the judgment that is universal all over the earth will pass them by. That's why if you have not been truly born again, if you have not been truly saved, if you have not escaped the judgment of God, if the judgment of God is still hanging on your head even tonight, if the Spirit of God is convicting you on sin, you know you are a sinner. And the soul that sinneth shall die. And the judgment of God is hanging on your head. Tonight, look to the Lamb, the Lamb of God. And as you look at the Lamb, and you look to the Lamb who was killed and slain for you, and you believe in the blood that was shed for you tonight, judgment will pass you over in Jesus' name. Not only that, physical death was going to come upon all the firstborn of the children of the Egyptians. That means those firstborn in the land of Egypt, they were going to die prematurely. A reckoning day, a final day had come for them. Their sin, their rebellion, their disobedience, their resistance to the will of God and to the call of God, which was epitomized in Pharaoh. It was going to be visited on the firstborn in the land. They were going to die prematurely. The nature of the redemption for the children of Israel is that that premature death on those Egyptians, the children of Israel will escape tonight. Premature death will pass over you. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, it tells us, And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, We be all dead men. Your enemies will leave you alone in a hurry. Anything that you have been said, you have prayed and you have fasted, release me. Let me go. Let me leave this sin. Get off my life and get off my back and get off my body. And all that time you have been praying and seeking the face of the Lord, it appeared that Pharaoh was stubborn. It appeared your problem was stubborn. It appeared your sickness was stubborn. All that stubborn spirit tonight will get out in Jesus' name. Verse 41, in verse 41, and it came to pass. At the end of 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Mark that word all. All the hosts of the Lord went out of the land of Egypt. All of us were coming out. No one will be left behind. And then he tells us in verse 42. Verse 42 tells us, it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. This is your night. Some 130, the nature of our redemption. The nature of the redemption that he gave to the children of Israel, which now is applicable to us, which now is translated, transmitted unto us. Psalm 130 verse 8. And he shall redeem Israel from 
Tell me out loud. Tell me that again. All his iniquities. There are people who tell us they are born again, but they have not been redeemed from all their iniquities. The people who tell us that they are children of God and that they have been redeemed. They have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you look at their lives very closely. There are iniquities in their lives. There are transgressions in their lives. There are evil habits in their lives. There are besetting sins in their lives. They know it. God knows it. Satan knows it. The neighbors know it. And their conscience knows it as well. But the redemption that the Lord has promised and the redemption that he wants to give is redemption from all sin, redemption from all iniquities, redemption from all transgressions. And tonight is that night that he, the Lord himself, shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Look at what the New Testament says in uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Titus chapter 2. Verse 14, telling us about this redemption from all iniquity. Titus chapter 2, verse 14, who gave himself, that's our Savior, who gave himself, that's the Lamb of God, who went to the cross of Calvary and died for us, who gave himself, that's the one that shed his blood for your redemption, for my redemption, who gave himself for us. Not for himself, for you, for me, for us. That he might redeem us from, tell me, tell me out loud. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. That's what Jesus died for. He took the children of Israel out of Egypt, all of them, out of everything in Egypt. And he wants to take you from all your sin, all your iniquity, none, nothing remaining, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. It will happen. I said it will happen. The time is near, and the Lord will do it for you, will do it for all of us in Jesus' name. The nearness of the final redemption. The nearness of the final redemption. Luke chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, now it's talking about the signs of his coming. And we see the signs all over the world right now that the Lord had given. And the Lord says, as you see these signs beginning to happen when they come to pass, when they come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 36. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour. No, it's no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. He's talking of the day of his coming. The day of that final redemption. When he will take us out of this world, out of this life. And he'll take us to the great beyond to meet the Lord in the air. There are people who are giving to false prophecy. And they are predicting the date of his coming, the time of his coming. They are saying it's going to be at this date, it's going to be at that date. Many people have said dates like that and they have failed because it says in that verse 36 of that day and that hour, no it's no man, no it's no one on earth, no, not even the angels of hell, but my father only. But as the days of Noah, so shall also the coming 
of the Son of Man be. It happened before. Noah warned the people that judgment was coming universal upon the whole world. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. Prepare for that redemption. Final redemption. It's going to happen again. And that's what Jesus said that as it was in the days of Noah, even so shall it be at the time of the Son, of the coming of the Son of Man. That's the time of redemption, final redemption. The day of that final redemption, when everything will be over, when the history of man will come to an end, and when the history of every individual on earth will come to an end, that day is coming, and it says, get ready, prepare. There are many people in the world take that information with loose hands and will not prepare, but it says, for us, the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, the lives walking was for eating and drinking all the activities for eating and drinking all their pursuits for eating and drinking and the lord said it will be the same at the time of his coming marrying and giving in marriage the only thing some people think about marrying and giving in marriage until the day that noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's why he's saying, get ready, prepare. Because of the nearness of the final redemption. Luke chapter 17. In Luke chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 28. Luke chapter 17, verse 28. The redemption is near. Verse 28 tells us, Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. Do you do more than that? Do you go beyond the Sodomites, beyond the people of Gomorrah? Because in those days of Lot, they ate and they drank. They bought and they sold. They planted and they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus, even so, shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Verse 32. Remember Lord's wife. Verse 32. Can we read that together? One, two, three, go. Can you say that again? For the last time. Remember Lord's wife, she looked back and became a pillar of salt. I pray you will not look back. I pray you will not go back. I pray you will not turn back. I pray you will not slide back. See there are some people, they are looking back. Looking back to the world they came from. Some people are turning back, turning back to the world they came from. Some people are going back, going back to their old boyfriend, old girlfriend, old lifestyle, old company, going back. Some people are just gradually, gradually sliding back. I pray you will not slide back. Because that day, final day of redemption is very near. I'm looking at First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not. Because it knew him not. There are people who are laboring for the world to know them. 
all their aspiration, all their ambition, all their pursuit, all their desire. Everything they try to do is that the world will know them. But the nearer you get to God, the nearer you prepare, the more you prepare for this final redemption day, the less the people of the world would even recognize you. And if the final day of redemption is the day you are dreaming of and desiring and passionately wanting to make, it will not be the pursuit of your life that this world will know you. Behold, what man of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not, beloved. Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be in that final day of redemption. That day when the Lord will have saved us and sanctified us and purified us and purged us and prepared us for the coming of the Lord. It says, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Verse 3, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. Even as he is pure, the Lord is coming. Should be the pursuit of your life, your heart, to prepare for the coming of the Lord. In, Re in Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Revelation chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 15. Behold, he comes. Blessed are those people that prepare for his coming. Preparing for that final day of redemption. In Revelation chapter 16 verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief, a thief in the night. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments. Lest he walk naked and see a shame. I pray God will help you to prepare. I say God will help you to prepare. Revelation chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 7. Behold, I come quickly. The day of redemption is very near. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sins of the prophecy of this book. Verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life that they may enter in through the gates into the city, the heavenly city. I pray you'll be there. But outside, without, are the dogs and the sorcerers, the allmongers, the murderers, the idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. The people who are not ready for that final day of redemption, which is fast drawing near the dogs, those who are clean like dogs, those who are violent like dogs, those who fight like dogs, those who back, right, to destroy other people's lives like dogs, and the sorcerers, those who pray to a familiar spirit, evil spirit, they're not ready for that coming day of the Lord. The all mongers, the adulterers, the fornicators, the unclean people, the immoral people, they are not ready. The murderers, the killers, including those who commit abortion, the idolaters, idol worshippers, and who are and loveth and maketh a lie, they are not ready. I pray you'll get ready. I said you'll get ready. Which means you repent of your sin, you come to the Lord, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and then allow the blood of Jesus that was shed for you.
to cleanse you and to wash you while tell us no i jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches i am the root and the offspring of david and the bright and morning star the spirit and the bright say come and let him that hear us say come and let him that thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely the lord is saying you can have redemption today you can have forgiveness you can have salvation today you can have eternal life today you can have reconciliation with god today and you can have this righteousness from the throne of god that prepares us for the coming of the lord you can have it today verse 20 he which testifies these things saith, surely i come quickly amen even so come lord jesus the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all amen let's rise up and pray to the lord not the usual regular prayer definite prayer that the lord himself tonight will make you to experience this redemption that's redemption that he gives us now that's a full redemption a full and redemption that is a final redemption let's pray that the lord himself will make you see the lamb of god who takes the sin of the world away open your mouth and talk to the lord are you born again are you saved are you a child of god have you given your heart your life to the lord jesus christ there's a judgment coming upon the whole world universal judgment there is condemnation upon all sinners there's a wrath of god revealed from heaven upon all transgressors but the lord is saying look up jesus has died for you look up the blood of jesus has been shed for you look up your forgiveness is ready available and you can say lord forgive me and if you have been falling to sin and falling to sin falling to sin every time be very careful be very careful be very careful the lord is about to come and if he meets you in that condition backslider missing that condition under the captivity of besetting sin missing that condition under the bondage of sin where will you spend eternity the trumpet may sound at any time the lord may come at any time settle with the lord today the lamb has been slain already the blood of the lamb has been shed already in jesus name we pray nobody else's prayer can save you from sin because nobody can repent for you nobody can force you and drag you to heaven you have to be willing of yourself to realize that jesus died for you on the cross of calvary i pray the lord will make you ready in jesus name are you there i said the lord will make you ready in jesus name father in the name of jesus we thank you for your goodness we thank you for the plan of redemption we thank you because whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved i pray lord conviction for sin will come upon all sinners tonight in jesus name that no sinner here no sinner anywhere hearing this message will have peace of mind until he or she totally surrenders unto you in jesus name that serious conviction fiery conviction 
soul stirring conviction will trouble their hearts and drive them to Calvary in Jesus' name. We pray that as the arrow of the word comes forth, as the fire of the word comes forth, no sinner will be able to hide. Awaken everyone in Jesus' name. That Lord, as we look up to you, turning away from sin, turning to the Savior, I pray, Lord, there will be real redemption. There will be real salvation. And I pray that the power of sin, you will break away from every life in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. We are praying, O oh Lord, that your people who are saved, sanctify them. Purify them. Make them holy. Help us, Lord, through and through to hate sin like we hate the deadliest poison in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that where there is no sin, sickness will not be there. When there's no sin, Satan will not be there to torment. And therefore we pray, Lord, that as you redeem your people from all iniquity, save them from all iniquity, I pray every sickness will flee away in Jesus' name. And I break the power of sickness in your life. The power of that plague I break from your life in Jesus' name. The name of the Lord sets you free. The blood of the Lamb sets you free. And I, and I command your freedom, your deliverance right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, touch everyone. Heal your people. Deliver your people. Lord, beyond that, above that, more than that, set your people free from all sin. That we will live a life that makes us ready for the coming of the Lord. Confirm all forms of miracles, natural, physical, spiritual, in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.